Welcome to a report back on a workshop that was held earlier this week regarding health financing for cervical cancer elimination, designing advocacy messages for equitable access to innovation in communities. My name is Margaret Cornelius. I'm a deputy director at ThinkWell, which is a health systems research organization committed to advancing universal health coverage around the world. I'm pleased today to provide some reflections on this workshop and talk a bit more in depth about how health financing and health financing evidence and information can be used from an advocacy standpoint to influence the policy dialogue around increasing access to resources and services for cervical cancer elimination. So the objectives of the workshop were really to invite the participants who mostly represent civil society organizations to learn more about health financing from a technical standpoint and also see how health financing information and evidence is relevant to their priorities and their objectives in their countries. One of the things that we talk about in health financing is really about where the money comes from, how it's used, how it's organized, and what objectives it's trying to achieve. And the importance of this dynamic is really to understand how we can promote access to better quality care and more access to cancer and cervical cancer elimination services. So what we did was really provide an update on where the progress is with cervical cancer elimination, talk about how we could leverage knowledge generation activities from the broader success consortium, and also focus in on health financing as a specific domain of importance to this group. We spent a little bit of time with the group going through health financing as sort of a technical area, and then we all split up into simulation exercises where we talked about how a health financing approach or a health financing issue area could be leveraged and used in the policy space to get decision makers and policymakers to think about how to mobilize more resources for cervical cancer elimination and use existing health resources to achieve better quality and better access. So as I already noted, health financing, very simply defined, is about who pays for what and to what end. And of course, it's a critical element of achieving successful and scalable cancer and cervical cancer control programs. Think well, as a partner to UICC and the broader success consortium, is working on this from the lens of how we can understand the upstream financing challenges that influence service delivery and influence communities and access to care for women who are in need. So what we'll be doing is providing a concrete understanding and an assessment of where the opportunities are given the current health financing landscape, and then really thinking about solutions to some of those challenges at the service delivery level for which health financing is an effective tool. One of the things that we posed to the group was thinking about where the country, in any country, but of course the countries we were talking about were Guatemala, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, and the Philippines, which represent four of 20 countries that the Success Project is trying to support. Where does the country need to turn up the volume or increase the volume for health financing? So this slide shows various knobs that might be turned, and you can turn all these knobs simultaneously, or you can turn them in different directions. But of course, recognizing that you probably have to work through all of them in order to have an effective health financing strategy for cervical cancer. So there's a question around sufficiency. Are there enough resources for health? Usually the answer to this is no. Even in very, very high income settings, health resources are very scarce and very precious. Then we also want to look at efficiency. So even if you were to increase resources for health and be successful in that, you would want to be sure that you were using those resources efficiently, meaning that the money that's available is going to the right people in the right places for the right things. That then, of course, leads into effectiveness. Effectiveness is not equal to quality, but often in healthcare, that's where we see impact. So how well are the resources being used to drive quality of care? Because of course, quality is highly correlated with outcomes. If you have, low, if you have lots of low quality care, it doesn't really have the impact that you're wanting. And so you want to be sure that the resources you have are driving for quality as much as for efficiency. 
And then another critical dimension of this, and this is really important for cervical cancer, which some would consider to be a very under-prioritized disease and indeed a, a, a condition that affects um, particularly women who are um, experiencing poverty, are we using these resources to get to the people who are most in need? Are we trying to use our financing strategies to drive an equity agenda as much as a sufficiency or efficiency agenda? And then finally, this is important for an advocacy community, transparency. Do citizens even know what's being spent on health? Do they care? Does it matter? Do citizens advocate for increases in resources for health? This is something that um, I think more work can be done, particularly for cervical cancer elimination, where actually documenting how resources flow and making sure that that information is in the public domain that is a huge, huge, huge issue area that many advocates could grab onto and use as a way to effectively advocate with their decision makers and policy makers. And so as we closed out the workshop, we asked our participants to reflect upon what might be the biggest opportunity for improving cervical cancer financing in their respective countries. And finally, as we think about health financing, which tends to be rather technical and somewhat dominated by um, researchers and, and economists, we wanted to offer that health financing doesn't have to be only about quantitative evidence or about counting numbers or counting the amounts of things that go into a system. And indeed, there are lots of different ways that health financing advocacy can support this cervical cancer elimination agenda. We offered a few examples for folks to consider. And this is, these are not mutually exclusive but our representation of how a particular problem might be framed from a challenge standpoint, and then advocacy message that might uh, reflect and resonate with decision makers and with the people who are holding the power over resources in any given country. So for example, you may have an environment where health resources are very, very scarce for the entire health system. And then it really becomes a matter of demonstrating value for money which is of course a cost effectiveness argument. So we know that cervical cancer prevention is cost effective. And so how then you use that information to advocate within the system is a critical thing that many CSOs can take on. I won't go through all of these in detail, but we hope that these are illustrative examples of how financing can come into the policy dialogue and how it can really open up a lot of thinking and a lot of strategizing around how to cover these important services to improve women's health and save women's lives. Thank you so much.